Hi, my name is Michael Lucas, and um, I'm really proud to have contributed a story to this uh, anthology, Berkeley Noir. Um, my story, Dear Fellow Graduates, is set in the what I call the Indian Rock neighborhood um, in the North Berkeley foothills, and um, it's set in 1997 uh, when I graduated high school from Berkeley High. Um, and imagines what might have happened if, uh, you know, 18-year-old Michael David Lucas witnessed uh, a murder in which his uh, high school English teacher was uh, complicit or in involved in. Um, so, just going to read the first couple pages. Um, Dear fellow graduates, First of all, I think it's only appropriate for me to extend a hearty congratulations to my fellow graduates and to all of you proud family members. I've been there with you these past four years and I understand how you all must feel sitting up there on that stage. But as much as I would love to recount the ups and downs of the past four years, as much as I would enjoy reminiscing about spirit weeks past and shedding a tear over the last days of our youth, a higher duty calls me to task. What I present before you in this, my last column as editor of the Berkeley High Jacket, is a tale that needs to be told, burns to be told, even if some people out there, Mrs. Eliason, won't be happy I'm telling it. By now, some of you, especially all you proud family members, might be wondering, who the heck is this guy? What is he talking about? I thought this was the graduation edition of the Berkeley High Jacket. I can assure you that this is indeed the graduation edition of the Berkeley High Jacket. In the rest of these pages, you will find the traditional fare for such an issuance. On pages six to nine, you can see where your dear ch child and their friends are going to college, as if you didn't know already. On pages 12 through 15, you can read a variety of melancholy farewells to our fair school and so forth. If you would rather not read this story, you are obviously free to turn the page, but I can assure you that you will be glad to have read it. The events in question began late one Wednesday night a few months ago. Actually, technically it was early Thursday morning. As the editor of this fair paper, it was my responsibility to drive the finished proofs down to our printer in Fremont once every other week. It's a long drive, and on my way home, I would often stop at a little park near my dad's house. You may be familiar with Indian Rock around the corner. You may also know Grotto Rock a few blocks up the hill. Chances are, though, you've never heard of Mortar Rock, which is why I like it. There's almost never anyone there. On the night in question, I was coming home particularly late. The moon was high and white, and the streets were empty. I parked across the street from the rock and climbed up to the top, which as I went, I noticed the two men in a beat-up white Volvo. There are any number of reasons why two men might be sitting in a beat-up white Volvo across the street from a park at 2.30 in the morning, but these two seemed a little shady. They were both uncommonly large, with Nordic features and a slightly dented appearance that seemed out of place in the neighborhood. Was I stereotyping? Yes, my fellow graduates, I was. And like any good Berkeley High student, I felt bad for succumbing to my biases. But as we will see, my biases, in this case at least, were spot on. After sitting quietly on top of the rock for five or ten minutes, not smoking a joint or anything like that, I realized that there was someone else in the park with me. A tall, gangly man bent over a trash can. It took me a moment to process that this man, digging frantically through the trash in a public park at 2.30 in the morning, was none other than my English teacher, Mr. Balls. As most of my fellow graduates know, Mr. Balls is not your typical English teacher. He can recite Beowulf in by heart and Old English. He often delivers Shakespearean monologues from atop his desk, and once he decided dedicated an entire period of my Bible as literature class to the poetry of Liz Fair. 
I can't say that I'm the biggest fan of Mr. Balls. My own personal feeling is that he's kind of a poser. But I don't have any particularly ill will toward him, and I've always thought that the jokes about his name are a little cheap. So there we were, Mr. Balls and me, staring at each other across Mortar Rock. Michael Lucas, he said, in the same voice he used to call my name off the roll sheet. AP British Literature. There was a short silence, then the car door slammed, and Mr. Balls took off running. That's all I'm going to read for right now, but uh, if you want to read more and a bunch of other really great stories, check out Berkeley Noir, available at a local bookstore near you. Bye.